needs of people who are usually more remote. To begin to explain what I have been speaking of, I will now begin a story that the Maya gave to me to give to you. It moves like a river, turning and changing direction, but always heading to the ocean. It will begin to narrow the gap between the way the ancient world understands and the modern world interprets the sun and the earth and the universe. If you can view what I am saying from your heart and not your mind, you will understand. In July of 2007, Don Alejandro and his wife Elizabeth came to Sedona, Arizona, where I live, to meet with me. They wanted to tell me about some of the Mayan prophecies and to ask for assistance in these prophecies. Why me? Well, I can't really tell you, except that, uh, like I said, I've been working with them for a long time, and I, I think they trust me. The first thing that Don Alejandro told me was that everything we have read, heard, or seen about the Mayan culture and the Mayan calendar was not approved or written by uh, the Mayan people or any of the councils and therefore not spoken by the Mayan people. What we have learned from the Mayans has come from the universities and governments and religions and archaeologists and ordinary people like Jose Aguilas and some of who are Mayan. But to be very clear, the National Mayan Council of Elders of Guatemala, according to Don Alejandro, has not said one word in 527 years. That's a very long time of silence. So you can see why the Maya breaking their silence at this time should be of great importance to the world. And further, everything that we now know about the Maya has to be put aside so we can hear the truth, not a truth made up by outsiders who are simply guessing or are living a consciousness that has almost nothing to do with the Maya. Here's what Don Alejandro told me about the Mayan prophecy of 2012. First of all, he said there is a window of time around this date, December 21st, 2012, the Mayan call the end of time. It is about seven or eight years in dur duration. This window began, as I understand it, on October 24th, 2007. But I have not been told the exact date it would end. But for certain, at this moment, we are all now living in this window called the end of time. Don Alejandro also said that the likelihood that the Mayan prophecy would begin on that date of December 21st, 2012, as most people in the world believe, is extremely unlikely. He simply said it would begin somewhere in the window of the end of time, which means any minute from now and could late begin as late as 2015. This is something that none of the uh, prophecies that the modern world is talking about is, uh, is saying. And further, to grasp the situation, we have to, have to understand what the date of December 21st, 2012 actually is. And to do that, we must begin by talking about the precession of the equinoxes. For some of you, the Maya are using a cycle of approximately 5,200 years. And if you multiply this number by five, it equals 26,000 years. And this is the approximate length of the precession of the equinoxes and the actual cycle that the Mayans are using of 5,200 years is not that number either. It's slightly less. And so on this calendar, there are wheels within wheels taking place here. And all these wheels seem to be moving at different speeds. One of these is the precession of the equinoxes, which we'll explain in detail in a minute and it comes back around approximately every 26,000 years. These 52,000 year periods are, every, are five times on here where they don't meet the procession whatsoever, but every once every approximately 26,000 years, those two cycles come into perfect alignment. And that's what's happening on December 21st, 2012. So let's take a closer look at time. Uh, to, so we can see how this bigger picture emerges and we can see what the procession of the equinoxes is within this larger picture. Time is an elusive human concept. We look at our watch and say, well, it's 432. But most of us forget that this time is connected to the rotation of the earth. 
a real thing, not a digital mind thing. We look at the sunrise or the sunset and we think the sun is moving. But really this motion is an illusion also as it is still only the rotation of the earth that is causing this illusion. The same movement that creates our everyday time. The earth spins one full revolution and we experience a single day. This single cycle is divided into 24 segments which we call hours. Of course we know this. Everyone knows a day is one revolution of the earth. The second best known earth cycle is the journey that the earth makes around the sun. One cycle around the sun is one year or 365.25 days. Some scientists say it's 365.44 days. And so it is clear that we count time by the movement of the earth relative to the sun. But there are other movements and cycles within and connected to the earth that are understood a lot less by most people on earth, but have as much effect on our everyday lives as the hours we record with our watches. We just don't know it. For example, the angle the earth's axis is tilted to the sun has an enormous effect upon every human on earth which is at this moment about 23.5 degrees and is called the Earth's obliquity. This angle to the sun creates our seasons, our summer, our spring, fall, winter, and it is constantly changing. The axial tilt of the Earth changes from 22.1 degrees to 24.5 degrees over an approximately a 42,000 year period. Now this is a really long period and you wouldn't think that it had anything to do with everyday life. But even with this long cycle, astronomers, for example, must take into account this changing tilt of the Earth's axis, axis on a daily basis as they explore the universe with their computerized telescopes. If they don't, they will not be looking at what they think they are supposed to be looking at. They'll end up looking at somewhere else. And even our journey around the sun is not as simple as it seems. The orbital shape called the eccentricity is also constantly changing. Our Earth moves from a near perfect circle around the Sun to an ellipse over time caused mostly by the gravitational influence of Jupiter and Saturn. This cycle is changing over a very long period of time, about 100,000 years, and interestingly enough, it does not change the length of the year as it moves from a circle to an ellipse and back again. And then there is the precession of the equinox, a wobble in the axis of the Earth that has been recently calculated by science in the year 2000 to be exactly 25,771.5 years for the axis to make one complete rotation. Now, now if you look at this here, what we're talking about is this is the axis and it's moving in a wobble. It's moving in a circle. It's not a perfect circle, it's actually a little bit more of an, an ellipse rather than a circle. And for that to go from one time around, one wobble, takes almost 26,000 years. The cause of this wobble are primarily from the sun and the moon, though other bodies do affect it. The precession of the equinox is also always changing because of something called the Milankovitch cycles. The Milankovitch cycles are the summation of all the Earth cycles and all other cycles that affect the Earth cycles, which appears to be constantly changing. The scientific focus of the Milankovitch cycles has been mostly to study the effects they have on the Earth's climate. Yes, to study the Earth's climate, one has to know the Milankovitch cycles as well as the sun's solar cycles, another paramount subject on Earth's climate. And then, of course, there is the orbit of the moon, which causes the tidal evolution and, like a clock, determines the high and low tides of our oceans, something that affects every person who moves upon the surface of the oceans, but which affects the Mil Milankovitch cycles as well. These cycles also affect human emotions and millions of biological cycles of all life on Earth, such